So this summer, Mariah and I are doing another road trip because last summer, our road trip was absolutely incredible. I just finished up all the planning and kind of logistics for this trip. So I want to share this itinerary with you. Part of my planning process for a road trip like this is I shared my itinerary with uh, some other road trippers that have some experience. I posted it in a Facebook group called National Park Road Trips. I shared my itinerary with all of them and I asked everybody to give me feedback and thoughts on the logistics and kind of ask for suggestions on things to do while I'm in each park. So 20 people quickly critiqued my plan. I realized I left out a lot of details and a little bit of history on me and Mariah and our travel style. So I wanna share some of the details that I left out of that post. So a little bit about me and Mariah. We're both hairstylists living in Atlanta, Georgia. Before we were road trippers, we were car campers and backpackers. So what I love about road tripping is you kind of pack minimal like a backpacker, but you get the luxuries and comfort of having a vehicle. The way that we travel is we sleep in the back of our Jeep Cherokee. We store all of our stuff in our cargo container on top of our car. And then we have our bikes on the back of the car on a hitch. It's an easy setup. We do not mind hopping from campsite to campsite or crashing in a parking lot for an evening. Uh, it takes us literally 10 minutes to get up and go. So last summer was our first big road trip. We went to Zion National Park. We drove straight there from Atlanta. It was, uh, I think it's a 28 hour drive. We got there in about 36 hours. We stopped for gas, food, the bathroom. We slept in a Walmart parking lot for five hours. You know, looking back, it's hard to remember how hard or painful something was. My memories are that it was a pretty good experience for both of us. The only real hard part was the last four hours of the drive. We were just so ready to get there. We did actually stop one time. We were passing Lake Powell and the sun was setting and there was a pull off and we were like, ah, let's just stop and smell the roses, enjoy this. And it was so peaceful. I'm so glad we stopped. We made it to Zion pretty quickly, which was looking back pretty nice. Since it was our first national park road trip, we were a little underprepared. I hadn't gotten any campsites at all. I think I had checked a couple times, but everything was booked and I was just like, you know what? We'll just boondock if we have to. But luckily, while we were on the way to Zion, I was able to snag three different campsites. So we did have to hop around, but it was actually kind of fun and it was a bit of an adventure in its own little way. We had an incredible time in Zion National Park. We spent three nights there. We did Angels Landing, we did the Narrows, we biked down the, the canyon, and we had an amazing time. We were really sad to leave. But we left and we kind of scooted over to Bryce Canyon. We spent probably 45 minutes there. We just drove up to a lookout, hung out for a bit. It was nice, but we did not spend enough time there to really appreciate it. From there we drove, I believe it was about four or five hours close to uh, Arches National Park. We camped at a state park 45 minutes away. The next day we visited Arches, did a little hike and uh, took some pictures. Once again, we did not spend enough time there to fully appreciate it. And um, I don't regret the way we did it. Actually, maybe I do regret it a little bit. I know exactly how I would do it, um, but I don't want to ruin the story. So from Arches, we drove up to Rifle, Colorado. That was probably three or four hours. We camped there at a park and woke up. There was an inch of snow on the car. We drove all the way through Colorado um, until probably about 11 p.m., uh, it snowed the entire time and we eventually had to just pull into a rest stop and sleep in the car because there was so much snow on the roads and they weren't plowing them yet. And I can't remember how much snow we woke up to, but it was like a couple of inches. That was wild. And then we just drove home. Uh, I think we spent maybe two or three more nights driving home. So we spent like a total of four or five days driving home, which was the opposite of the way that we did it on the way out there. This kind of leads me into what we learned from our trip last year. So the first thing that we learned from our trip last year was we kind of prefer to drive straight there 
and get to our destination and then spend as much time there as possible. It's kind of just like dragging out a painful part of the process. And, you know, for us, it works. The next thing we learned from this trip was we need to camp in the park and we need to spend some significant amount of time there to fully appreciate it and soak in all the the beauty and kind of wonders of these grand parks like stopping into bryce and arches like it just didn't do enough for me like i wish we could have gotten a campsite in those national parks last year the last thing that we learned was save the park that you're looking forward to the most to last because when we left zion we were borderline depressed i felt like the trip was kind of over after that point i'm not making that mistake again this year i'm saving the best for last this year we have 17 days off for our road trip and i think that is absolutely amazing because mariah and i have never taken that much time off of work in our entire lives. I'm not going to say exactly when we are going on this trip, but I will say that part of the trip is in May and part of the trip is in June and we'll be gone for 17 days total. The first national park that we're going to is the Grand Canyon. It is a 26 hour drive to the campground that we're staying at the first night. We've given ourselves 44 hours to get there. So I think that's more than enough time as long as everything goes pretty smoothly. The first campsite that we're staying at at the Grand Canyon is called Desert View Campground. And it's supposed to be one of the more quiet campgrounds. It's a little more secluded. I felt like this would be a nice place to just rest from our long drive and just kind of chill for the evening, maybe just kind of get a view of the canyon, but nothing too crazy. Uh, and then the next day, drive about 45 minutes over to Mather Campground. And this is more in like, I want to say the heart of the Grand Canyon, like there's probably grocery stores and I think there was a school over there. It looks like a little town. Um, we've got two nights there. If for some reason we decide to drive even slower to the Grand Canyon, we can cut off the first night and just release that reservation. So that's really not a big deal. That'll give us another 24 hours to get out there. From Mathers Campground at the Grand Canyon, it's a 10 hour drive to Sequoia National Forest. Um, we're staying at Lodgepole Campground. I believe this is one of the more popular campgrounds in the national park. So I was thrilled that I got two nights there with no problem. We're gonna split that 10 hour drive up over the next kind of day and a half. We'll camp in a parking lot, maybe a Cracker Barrel. Lately, I've been wanting to do that so I can wake up and get breakfast there. After spending two nights in Lodgepole Campground, we're going to drive 45 minutes north to Azalea Campground, which I think is in, it's still in the same area. So it's like Sequoia slash Kings Canyon National Park. I picture spending time in Sequoia National Park while we're at Lodgepole. And then I picture spending time in Kings Canyon while we're at Azalea Campground. From Kings Canyon, it's going to be a four hour drive to Diamond Oak Campground, which is in Yosemite National Park. It's about one hour from the valley. I am so grateful that I was able to get these campsites. So from there, we have two more nights in Yosemite National Park. I have reserved one night in the valley and I'm trying to get another night in the valley right now. Uh, if we, for some reason, can't get another site, we will either boondock outside of the park or just head home early and give ourselves an extra 24 hours to kind of get sidetracked, maybe go through Death Valley. Um, someone mentioned that, but the lows are like a low of 80 and a high of 110. So that kind of pushes me away. From Yosemite Valley, it is a 36 hour drive back to our home in Atlanta. We've given ourselves 60 hours to get there, which I think, you know, as long as you don't run into any hiccups, uh, it should be totally doable. Once we get home, we have a full day to rest and recover before going back to work. So there's a little bit of padding in there in case something happened. Let me know what you think about our plans. I know it sounds absolutely crazy to do this much driving and cover that many miles, but the trip that we took last summer was probably one of the best memories I have in my entire life. That road trip is one of them. And then the RV road trip that my parents took me on when I was probably six years old also was one of the best memories. So I'm willing to put the work in to reap the rewards. Thank you for watching and uh, I will see you next time.